everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I am so excited to share with you my first experience playing with Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I recently decided to splurge on a box of 48 and I am freaking out because I love them. All right, I made this card. And while I'm not gonna show you the complete process, I am going to show you how easy it is to use these markers. Now today, I'm using three markers and it gave me all that color. So I feel like a box of 48 might have been overkill, but man, am I excited to see what I'm going to be able to do with them because here's the thing. I made this chart and you can download this today on my blog. It's a free download printed on some watercolor paper. Um, it's designed for the 48 set and I did this so I could have a reference because I really don't know a lot about watercolor at this point. And these are watercolor pens. So today I'm using some Tim Holtz white watercolor cardstock going to use my Misty tool. I have some Versamark ink and just some white Hero Arts powder that I reach for a lot when I'm embossing. I am using a stamp from this Alta New Beautiful Day set, just the outline of this layering floral set because I just needed the outline, and three colors. The colors I'm using today are the Mid Green, the scarlet red and the carmine red. And again, I'm just kind of shocked at how much depth you get out of three colors. And this is a brand new pen for me. It's just a, a tonic nouveau aqua flow water pen. Just fill it up with water. And these are the tools that I'm using today. All right, I've also got my creative corners in here. Um, I just started using these for my Misty tool because when you want something to hang off the end, but you, you know, bleed off your paper, so to speak, but you want to stamp it more than once, the creative corners are great for that because they will hold everything in place and it's easy to line things up. So that's why I have the creative corners. Now I'm just going to set this stamp so it hangs off to the side. And all I'm going to do today is two of the flowers to show you how this works. I'm going to pick it up with the Misty Door and just pick that up. And now I'm going to take my little magic embossing uh, anti-static tool that I just keep on the side in a little bowl and just really coat that down. It doesn't really matter as much when you're doing white, but I, I don't like the powder to go where it's not supposed to go. So get that powder down before I stamp. And for some reason, my magnets were not, things weren't staying in place, but you know, we're, we're going to make it work. We're going to improvise, people. No editing needed here. Okay. Now I'm going to use the Versamark ink. You could use any other sticky ink that you have. I just have Versamark. Use this a lot. And I'm going to stamp or get this inked up really well. And I'm going to stamp it down on the watercolor paper. But I'm going to stamp it more than once just because the, you know, the watercolor paper isn't as smooth. It's a bit textured and I want to make sure that I get enough ink down there because it's kind of a delicate stamp. It's a delicate image and I want to make sure that I have powder in the places I need it to be so that when I go to color it in, you understand there will actually be an, a stamped image to emboss. So two stampings down. Fantastic. Now I'm going to move this guy out of the way. See you later, Misty. I, lo I love the Misty, by the way. It has, uh, it has made stamping possible for me. No lie. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put some embossing powder on here. I've got my, my little my baby spoon, learned about this from Jennifer McGuire, and it's so funny because it's such a tiny spoon, and I was going to put a bigger spoon in there, and the bigger spoon didn't fit, so I'm stuck with a baby spoon. But it is really, it's a cute little spoon, isn't it? Now, you can see that on there. It's a little hard, you know, in this light, but you can kind of make that out on the white paper. And now, I'm just going to heat up my gun a little bit. There, there it is off to the side. We're going to run it a little, get it a little warm. I learned this too from, from many card makers that are not that are not me, that are not at my skill level. Heat that gun up first and it will minimize the warping of your paper. So you can kind of see that start to get shiny and show up a little on camera. And that's what you want. This is just a nice way to get something on a white paper to color. I think this is actually one of my favorite things that I have learned since I started making cards is to do uh, an image stamped in and embossed with white. So there it is. And now I'm going to bring ye old Misty tool back in and I'm going to go ahead, reposition it, 
and I'm going to take the leaf stamp from the Alta New set. And actually, I just decided, you know what? I don't even I don't even need the corners because I'm hanging it off in a place that's easy to get to. So I'll just go ahead and stick that down again, throw on some magnets. And I definitely like to use magnets with uh, watercolor paper because it's thicker and it's kind of started to curve a little bit. And so I'm going to grab the outline leaf stamp. Place that guy back down off camera. You can't really see it, but I'm pulling it up. There's also a set of three layering leaves. And again, I just want the outline. I'll layer that down there. I'm going to get it as close as I can. And really, when I did the first card that I showed you in the beginning, I didn't really have a plan. I did this on two sides, and then it was sort of an afterthought, putting a sentiment on, and then I was so excited that it turned out to be as pretty as it did. So now, if I finish this panel for another card, I kind of have a better idea of how it's going to come together. So I'm going to repeat, ink this up, get it down, give it a really good press, and ink that up again and do it a second time again to get as much ink on that watercolor paper as possible. And now I am ready to go ahead and take this off, take off the magnets, and set this aside so I can go ahead and get my powder and repeat that process. Of course, it appears completely invisible until you put the powder on, and then like magic, Yes, there are the leaves. And again, this is just a technique to give me an outline that will let me paint easily. And you really can see it a lot better when you're working and you're under normal lights and yeah. All right, bring a heat tool back in, get it warmed up again, and now just set that until it gets nice and white and shiny. Ah. I still think it's kind of magical to watch the powder change. It's, uh, I, I am a new, well, I can still say I'm a new card maker because I haven't even had my first anniversary. It's coming. It's coming in April or March. April? Okay, now for painting. Now here's the cool thing. So you just lay down a little ink and these markers actually have a bristle brush tip. They're not like a regular marker. They are like little paint pens. And so they make it really easy to put it where you want it. And then I just take the aqua marker or any uh, water brush that you can, you can use for this and just sort of pull the color out from where I laid it down. I have a little paper towel that I just sort of dab off when I'm gonna change colors. Cause now I'm gonna get into the carmine red and here is what kind of blew me away. I'm using one color for the petals of this project. And from the, when I first started doing this and laid down my tiny bit of color, and I, I've watched a handful of videos from masters like Jennifer McGuire and Christina Werner and Gina K from Gina K Designs. I've watched people work with these pens, so I kind of had an idea of what to do. But as soon as I started to do it, I mean, I had made my sample sheet at first and I thought, oh, this is really cool. You know, the colors are really pretty but I, I wasn't really feeling that I was blending out my little sample swatch very well. But as soon as you start working with them with an image and you've got your outline there, and of course the white, the embossed area gives you that outline, it was just so cool to watch the color move and blend. And I'm sure too, depending on your paper, you know, I love the Tim Holtz watercolor paper. I love it because it is so white. I have another pad of some watercolor paper that I, when I hold it up next to the Tim Holtz paper, I'm like, oh, it's it's basically uh, it's basically yellow. And I really like to have it be this bright white. So I'm speeding this up just because it, you know, maybe, maybe you wanna watch me fill the whole thing in, but I, I yeah, trust me, it works. But, and the other thing is too, you know, I don't have experience with watercolor painting. I don't truly, no, where should the shadowing go? Where should it be darker? Again, just by watching other YouTube tutorials and realizing, okay, uh, each petal will have a little darker color at the base. So I'm coloring in the bases and then bringing that water pen in and drawing it out. So you can kind of see how that works. But it's really cool while you're doing it because if you're someone who has felt challenged by you know, painting or 
other artistic mediums. And I, I will be honest with you, I don't, I don't draw, I don't sketch. Uh, up until last year, I would have never picked up any kind of paint medium ever. It just wasn't something that I thought that I was any good at. Of course, then once I discovered how to do all of this, I was completely hooked. I went back in with a little more orange just to kind of draw that out a little more. And now I'm going to use the mid green and just color in the leaves. And again, I went with a little dark, little laid down the color in the center, you know, sort of just added the veins to the leaves and then just took that water pen and just pushed out the color. And what's cool too is, you know, once it dries, I mean, it dries so vivid as well. That's what's surprising. It doesn't really seem to soften up when it dries, but it just looks beautiful. And the last little bit was just to take that green. Look how fine that tip is. I was able to color in between the little area for the stems. And that's the other thing that's really cool. There's just, I feel like there's so much control with these pens. And that is the basic, that's the basic idea. I just feel like, you know what, if you don't think you can watercolor, give these pens a try. You need a few tools. You don't need, you don't need the whole set, trust me. Um, this was three pens three pens, all of that vivid, beautiful color. Also, um, that was the pretty pink posh was the sentiment. And that was the afterthought. I thought, what can I do with this? I did that, I embossed it with a little, uh, I cl put clear embossing powder on it, and then just put it on some beautiful Gina K cardstock, the black onyx. So this chart, again, you can download this for free. The information is below the video to see the blog post. And that is my card project for today. That's the finished card that I actually made. And again, I still can't believe that I am able to watercolor anything, but these markers have shown me that, you know what? There just might be an artist lurking inside me after all. Thanks so much for watching today. Please subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos seen here.